constantly shifting through the time-space continuum, Metron's three disciples observe the universe from the Mobius Couch. Hey, welcome to Mobius Couch. I'm Joe, one of your hosts, and Patrick is here as well. Say hi, hi Patty. Hi. And Alessandro is here. Hello. Welcome. Um, so this is going to be part two of our Snyder Cut Justice League discussion. And uh, we'll pick up where we left off, I guess. All right. So what else? Um, what what should we touch on? So Wonder Woman uses that ridiculous super move against the one regular human she fought in the entire movie. Every other time she, she tries to use it numerous times throughout the rest of the movie. And every time it's like her last resort thing. And she never gets to do it because the villain always stops her before she does it. And I just thought, all right, I figured it out. (laughs) She stopped too many bullets. She had way too much energy built up in there. So she's like, I got to get rid of this. (laughs) I can't just, I can't just go home now. I have to smash the bracelets together. He forced me to do it. He shot 37 bullets at those kids. I just thought it was was funny because yeah. She used it when she didn't need to, and when she needs to use it, she doesn't use it. She can't. She can't the whole time. I've got a weird, and this is, again, also happens in the Wonder Woman movies, but I don't know if it's just me, but whenever she fights, she slides all the time. Have you noticed that? All she does is slide around the floor, and I don't understand um, what style is that? Where you? Just I don't know, slide. but I initially loved it, but they, I feel like it's been done to death now. They'd really overdo it. Like initially I was just like, that's fucking badass. <laughs> She's but doing it's that every right. fight like, scene. She's but now it's like it. every scene. Yeah. Yeah. I don't get it. Like why, what is that? I don't it's know. It's too that she learned how to fly in 1984 and then she never flies again for the rest of her superhero career. Well, much like how Apocalypse forgot Earth had the anti-life equation, she just forgot to fly. Well, they went out of their way like 8,000 times to be like, Wonder Woman 1984 is not a, se- a direct sequel and it has nothing to do with all that. And I'm like, oh my God. i like, the overall problem of all of these movies is that there's no cohesive thought process or vision or like where each movie is going to put the next movie after that. They don't come in any sort of order. Every time they make an order, they cancel those movies and push them back and change them around. And it's just like, get a fucking plan in place and start making movies. And that's it. And maybe they'll be good and maybe they won't. But like, it's just like, what the fuck are you doing? You're all over the fucking place. I mean, and I 1984 is the perfect example of that. Well, I agree that that's the case, but I don't know if that's the main problem. Of DC. I think the main problem is these DC movies are shit. Not yeah. that they're disconnected, but. I mean, the disconnected, because they are trying the to. Disconnect, because that's the problem. They're trying to connect them, and then they're not connecting them. It's like, either, that's why I'm like, pick a fucking lane. Like, well, they're not, make they have, Wonder Woman movies and just go with whatever the one of you want to do, or make Justice League movies, or make Batman movies, or whatever the fuck, but it's like, you're all over the fucking place. Well, I think now they have picked a lane. They're not doing anything connected anymore. I think it's just a bunch of Which I think if you were to even go back and make this a cohesive story where every movie seems to float into the other, it still wouldn't be a great universe to watch because the characters are still all like terrible and not well developed given how many movies we've seen of them. There's not, you know, Wonder Woman's entire identity is based on Steve Trevor. Um, I don't even really know what Superman's personality is because he's so robotic most of the time that I don't really know what his goal is. I mean, his drive seems to be just to protect Lois. And if she wasn't around or if she was dead, then I guess he would just murder everybody. And yeah, join Apocalypse as we see in the nightmare. As, yeah, that we again see. Also, okay, the Martian Manhunter scene with fucking Martha Wayne. What the fuck was that? That scene was like one of the only decent, well-acted scenes because I really believe Diane Lane and Amy Adams breathing over, you know, a dead son, a dead husband. Yeah. And then it switches to him being the Martian. So all of the emotion that Diane Lane showed about grieving over Clark and being the only other person Lois could talk to that understood what she was going through, it just cheapened that entire conversation. I, did. I really, I'm trying so hard to not. <laughs> I did. You said Martha Wayne and she's dead, Patty. Oh, Martha. <laughs> but I was like, I can't. 
should I not should I not say it? he's so <laughs> far past it now? Should I say so? I can't not say something. The internet's gonna be like, what the yeah. fuck? He said Martha Wayne. There are so many um, Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice jokes we could make about confusing Martha Wayne with Martha Kent. <laughs> Martha Kent. It's weird like they never did that before, Batman. They're clearly the same person. I uh, so my one comment on what you just said. Patrick is, how did you notice the acting was good? Because I couldn't see anything in that fucking scene. Everything was oh, a shadow. Come. And so another big, all right, here, here we go. Get ready, buckle in. Another big problem I had with the Snyder cut. I couldn't see any of it. It's all fucking dark, like it's dark as shit. I couldn't see anybody's, like in maybe three of the scenes I could see someone's face and color. Everything else is like in shadow and not lit and gunmetal gray and fucking dour. But that scene you mentioned, I, I don't know, I wish I could pull up like a screenshot, but it's like, it's a daytime shot, yeah. but the light from the window goes nowhere. Everything's draped in shadow and these two women aren't facing the camera and no. they're, it's all dark. And like, how can you tell the acting's good? It could I, be body um, double for all I know. I think the delivery of the line, like, Honestly, I love the casting of Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman. Like aesthetically, she looks amazing. The lines she had in this movie were all very much, the, the dialogue was terrible in most of the scenes. So I think watching it the second time around, it was one of the only scenes that like, you kind of felt yeah, like- Yeah, they, they did a good job. Like <laughs> Lois is, Amy Adams does a great job even with this crappy movie and then so does Diane Lane. So, I mean, I agree with you, Patty. Like, I, I felt the emotion there, and then it's immediately robbed from you as a viewer when it's, like, revealed as the Martian Manhunter, which is the main point of what he's trying to say. I guess <laughs> my point with the Martian Manhunter was I was waiting for the payoff because he convinces Lois to go back to work, basically. He says the world needs you or something like that. Yes. And, so from Martha Kent's perspective, it's a very nice thing for a grieving mother to say to a grieving daughter-in-law like hey i loved my son too but you need to move on with your life and go back to you know like live again like you've been visiting the memorial every day of your life bringing that cop coffee like you know move on you think the martian and then it had nothing to do with anything when it's the martian manhunter was the martian manhunter trying to hook up lois with bruce is that why he's saying move on is he matchmaking oh, or like hey go back to work. <laughs> like it, it was just so odd. It was so odd. I was like, well, she must, but he can't see the future. None of it made sense. And again, I just felt like Zack Snyder was like, it would be really cool if we made her Martian Manhunter. And I almost feel like that maybe had been a decision he made when they rebooted the, like decided to finish it. Like, I feel like- I think that was definitely a shoehorned in. Martian Manhunter as a whole was definitely a shoehorned in after Snyderverse became or Snyder cut became a reality thing. Like I think that's an idea he had in his head that he never like really went with. And when he had the opportunity to jam it into this movie, he did it in a dumbest, the dumbest way possible. I would have preferred not to have the Martian Manhunter in the movie at all. It didn't make any sense. Like what was he doing? He comes to Bruce at the end and says, I realize I have a stake in this world now. Well, it's like, yeah, where else are you going to go? And again, I if he showed up at the end fight. That would make sense. Yeah. Yeah. Or at least, um, you know, for those of you that don't know, the Martian Manhunter's big weakness is fire, which is a pretty big weakness. So there was a lot of fire going on, I guess, at the reactor. Or you could even say maybe because the radiation can go there. But his main thing in JLA was that he was the mind link. You could have had some sort of thing where he came in and helped him. And in some said, I can't go in there and help you, but here's how I can help. Yeah. Now you all have walkie talkies in your brain, you know, like kind yeah, of thing. Yeah. It was just shoehorned fan service, though. There, they had no purpose. Back to, back to Alessandro's point, where none of the heroes really have any motive or drive to help people. Like, what, what was the Martian waiting for? Was he going to choose to align with Steppenwolf as Steppenwolf one? Or, like, what, what was he doing? What, why, why, what were you waiting for? I, that's what they don't really explain. Anyway. That's kind of my point. Like, if he's hiding on Earth and he's not like a quote unquote superhero, which is uh, on the surface fine, but then Superman shows up and he's an inspiring like, superhero and like, oh, he saved a bunch of people. Like, that should have been the moment where he's like, 
I realize I can do more here. There's like more at stake here. All those people died in Metropolis. I could have helped. I could have helped stop it or blah, 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 or whatever. You know, like that's the part where you bring in Martian Manhunter. You don't bring him in like after Justice League is over and then go like, hey, good job saving the world. I could have helped. But, uh, you know, now I realize I care. Like, what the fuck? For for listeners that might not know, Martian Manhunter is like, he's at the same level as Superman as far as his strength and speed and everything. We can also phase, he can phase through things yeah. and like change Superman, his he's, Yeah, he's kind of like the vision with telepathy. Like he can uh, phase through things, he's super strong, he's got laser beams. Yeah. Like he would have been a game changer in that fight. But if I was Batman, I'd be like, what the fuck were you? Also Batman's just kind of like, hey, see you around, all right. All right, and cool, he, another flying yeah. alien coming to visit me, no big deal. Like what the? F- I mean, I think People's Ben Affleck is collecting a paycheck and trying to survive through this. I don't. You could. Uh, I. I felt, after knowing everything, like it's my understanding that this role of Batman really took a toll on Ben Affleck. And rewatching this movie, you can tell he seems yeah. like he's a zombie. He just. It's the most like just lazy Batman. Not. Even at the very end with the nightmare scene and Joker alludes to killing Robin and Batman says something like, you better be careful what your next words are. And then Joker says something very offensive. And then Batman's like, that wasn't very careful. <laughs> okay. All right, Bruce, just go, just go home, man. Just get out of here. Yeah, well, he it's was... A, it's amazing how easy it is to get Batman wrong. He's not a complicated character. I mean, there's nuance there. But I mean, like, he's not hard to pull off. Like, he's not hard to write. It's not hard to. Uh, I haven't, we haven't ever gotten a really good Batman movie. It's insane. Well, I mean, Zack Snyder pulled off Frank Miller Batman pretty well. He's just a murdering psychopath with no positive traits. I mean, him. if you distract or if you subtract all the random people he killed in that warehouse scene, it is probably one of the best Batman scenes on a on a movie and and ever made. It's fantastic. Batman vs Superman. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. That was a pretty. If bad. you subtract that he's murdering people the whole time, it's fucking amazing for a Batman movie. No, I agree, and that's that's what I meant by action scenes like that. I I just I didn't think the JL movie had fun had yeah good exactly yeah at all compared to the past movie. He barely does anything like hand to hand. He just he flies his ship or he flies the big nightcrawler thing or he shoots parademons with their own guns like he doesn't really well, because what is he going to do that they they pit him against these super powered enemies that i mean he just can't do shit anyway what is he going to do i mean in the comics he still is will be in the background like kicking the shit out of a parademon that's the problem like yeah that's the thing like you in the comic books he's when he's in the justice league they do the fighting He's doing the thinking and the planning in the background and then helping in the background, not really like really fighting, but he's he's not the focus. Like he's not the main character. He's not up front. He's the one that's like hiding in the shadows and doing something. And then they get to the end boss and they beat somebody up and he's like, yeah, I was already here and I took down the computer system that was about to blow everything up. We're all good. You know, kind of thing. Like that's what Batman does in the Justice League. He doesn't like run around up front going like, let's go. He's not Captain America. You know, like he's the opposite of that. And I feel like people struggle with that dynamic. Like no one knows how to do that. They even struggled with it in the Justice League cartoon where like probably one of the best versions of the Justice League we'd ever really see. Yeah, on the screen, so to speak. Yeah. I mean, I know he was dead, but really, Batman was kind of. It was almost like they were making him Superman with recruit. Like, if anything, Batman would be <laughs> more reactive to the Justice League, like Jason Momoa or something, not wanting to be involved. Yes, suggesting it's a bad because when they bring up the idea of the Justice League, he's the one who's like, "No, nah, thanks. I kind of do my own thing. It's a little above my pay grade. I hang out in Gotham City and fight crime. Like, yeah, he's it's not, not the front man." He he's always the one that's like, you have to pull him into the Justice League and they have to be like, no, we need you, you know, for these reasons. And he'll be like, ah, oh, fine. You get me for like a day. You know, like that's usually how he acts in Justice League type scenarios. But again, they, they wrote themselves in this stupid situation where Superman's dead before the Justice League. So yeah. they right. can't be the... So another, all right, let's... I'm jumping around, but I have to talk about this because this is a decision that... I never understood 
Well, we're actually moving into part five, which is when they dig up his body. Yeah. I was, so why do they, why write it so that they have to resurrect Superman like that? Like why I write have no idea. a situation where your heroes have to dig up a fucking corpse and that, Frankenstein first of all, that's, revive it? That alone is fucked up. Second of all, done better in the comic books in the 90s when they killed him in the first fucking place because it was a big deal because they went to his like crypt or whatever and his body was missing. And they were all like, holy fuck, like what happened? Like we went, we stopped watching it for five minutes or there was a bunch of security measures and all of them were not tripped or something like that. And like somehow the body is gone. And then four Superman show up, classically not him, any of them. But like the idea is that any one of them could be, or maybe this like like Superboy might be him, but some sort of like rebirthed clone or something. And there's a cyborg Superman that's like all damaged and beat up, but it, maybe it's him because he just fought Dark or uh, <laughs> Doomsday and kind of like and his body was all damaged or so on and so on. It turns out like his Kryptonian ship basically like like robots came and like took his body away, and they're like, hey, he's not dead. We can fix him. You know, kind of thing, and then like, and it was just like a simple thing of like, just this fucking, just like some random robots were just like, "Hey, you idiot humans! Like, he's he just needs time. Like, we we'll we'll put him in this pod thing. He'll come back to life." Well, that's two, like they could have just done that. Two points on that whole thing, if I remember it right, at the end of Batman vs Superman, yeah, see a scene where Superman is lying there dead, but the particles around him start kind of floating. Yeah, out. start. Yeah, yeah. That they never follow up on that. Yeah, you thought they would have gone in that direction and just had him be in like hibernation. But and back didn't. to the digging up the grave, I'm not sure if it was in the weeding cut, but in the Snyder cut, Flash literally looks at Cyborg and says, you know we could do this in a nanosecond, right? And then Cyborg just kind of looks at him. I don't know if he, I don't remember if he says anything, but they decide to just do it at normal speed. And I don't know why, it's really bizarre. So that's a scene that Al famously hates from the Wade and Cut, and so do I. But however, I have to say, like, Snyder Cut does handle it ever so slightly better. It's still horrible because they're digging him up. But, like, essentially in the Wade and Cut, it's like this. It's just Flash and Cyborg. Wonder Woman and Aquaman are, like, not there. And it's just the kids. And it's, like, a weird bonding moment between Cyborg and Flash. And they're, like, making jokes and, like... Fist, like you know, like just like hitting fists and be like, ah, good joke. Let's. Did you say we're, they were, we're getting, fisting, we're, getting we're getting, we're getting, they're fisting they were each fisting? other. They're like, they're just bonding over the fact that they're digging Superman's body up. No mention of like how quickly they could do it. No mention of how fucked up it is that they're doing it at all. Wonder Woman and Aquaman aren't even there. Neither is Batman. None of, none of like it's. But in the, at least in the Snyder cut, Flash is like, we could do this really quickly. And yes, Cyborg does say that would be really disrespectful. Let's just do this quietly or you know like or kind of like he basically says like let's do this but let's be serious like that's insane you know kind of thing well that's and i and i'm i guess i kind of get it but at the same time you're just like this is fucked up i don't get it because when i digging up a body like why don't you just get it over with and make it as i don't know to, uh, i mean i guess i like i said like he's like oh, i could just do it with super speed and he's like uh show a little respect this is superman kind of thing and i guess that makes sense like it's a solemn moment and you shouldn't just zip through it kind of thing but why not it doesn't make it not, better per se it just makes it less horrible well why not just not have your heroes dig up a corpse that is the key to that and it was just weird that they really leaned into the comedy aspect of it it was bizarre i don't know well that was so what i mentioned earlier about surprises from the snyder cut that part surprised me because i when i saw the whedon cut and, the, and cyborg and flash are you know, joking, each other. joking and digging up. I could, I thought like, oh, well, that's definitely a Whedon thing. Like that's not, doesn't fit with Snyder. But then the Snyder cut also has them dig up a corpse, but with more people also around. Like I, I just- So, but surprised. here's the thing. It made Snyder it less also. weird to me that they sent the kids to dig up Superman when Wonder Woman and Aquaman are also there like talking about how serious it is and sitting at the man waiting. Like yeah. it actually helped a little bit. Like sending them by themselves to do it is almost more fucked up. But I just thought it was weird that the Snyder Cut also had digging up a corpse as a bonding to the building. <laughs> I, I, well, yeah, the I scene's just, weird at all. It, it's weird in general. <laughs> That's not being disputed. Um, 
But yeah, again, with these ideas of riding yourself into stupid situations, just don't make yeah. it so that your team of heroes has to Frankenstein resurrect a corpse. Yeah, like you're literally grave robbing and you already set it up that he's still alive. You already set that up. You're good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's Why just gone. do this? Why? Um, Dude, I don't know. So they go to resurrect Superman after that. In my notes, I don't know what she said, but I just said, oh my God, if Diana talks about love one more goddamn time. <laughs> then, I didn't realize like, Flash is looking around the ship and there's like corpses of other Kryptonians on the ship. I don't remember. I mean, I, I haven't seen Man of Steel since it first came out, but I didn't remember other people being in hyper. Um, there was, well, so it's a ship that came to colonize a long time ago and for whatever uh, reason no. they died and they're under the ice gotcha and now the I remember. original now I remember. implication was that one of them was opened and not in the thing meaning oh. like maybe that's supergirl or something like there was like this original like slight implication like maybe we'll get a supergirl movie out of this or something like that from that one like throwaway there's a there's some corpses in the in the ship and one of them's missing kind of thing and then in this it's the it's just the same thing. You just see the same thing, but they showed that in Man of Steel. Yeah, for I guess for some reason I was thinking it was Superman's ship, but that wouldn't make any sense. Why they would say yeah, that. no, yeah, no. It's the Kryptonian ship that was like on Earth. It's his fortress of solitude, so to speak. That uh -huh. in this version of reality. No, wait, what? I thought it was I thought it was Zod's ship in Metropolis. No, no, the ship that he finds in the ice is like ancient. It's been there for like fucking ever. Oh, and no, that's another thing. I thought, I thought Patrick was talking about Zod's ship in Metropolis. Yeah, that's the ship they, what shot? Wait. No, the ship in Metropolis is the ship that Clark like found in the ice. Oh, I thought it was Zod's ship. No. Um, so Superman, um, they, they resurrect him. And uh, so do we want to talk about that scene at all? We did talk about dead bodies on the Kryptonian ship. I will say one thing. I, I do say. like the scene with Flash, like how he had to go reset time. <laughs> he had to bat. He had to go so fast that the time but backed up because he missed the mark. And I was like, that's kind of cool. Oh uh, yeah. That was it. Just I just kind of like that little tidbit of like he didn't get there. He fucked up and he didn't get there in time, so he had to go so fast that. Well, that's when he's touching Cyborg to. No, when he's touching the box or whatever. Like, the, oh, yeah, the box, did. like he missed the box and he had to like run so fast that, that the box came back up to meet his finger. And I was like, that was kind of cool. Oh. Also, did you what? love how Flash runs in this? So, oh, so let, or, you know what? Screw it. Let's talk about how Flash runs. <laughs> Why can't he? <laughs> well, we talked about it so long ago and I was like, we'll talk about it later. And then I was like, I guess we should just talk about it. Let's do it. Why <laughs> does he do a Tai Chi speed skating thing? Why can't he just run? fucking well, know. It was very distracting watching it the first time because I had no idea yes. that they were going for, and I it just bothered me. Now that I know that there was this whole idea of him moving like water and like a speed skater and trying to be kind of novel about it, okay, that's fine. It just didn't. It wasn't intuitive, I think, for the audience to be like, "Oh, he's doing tai chi." I don't. That, I think that's the problem. It it had a lot of thought put into it and they missed the mark because it was not intuitive and every single person that sees that just goes what the fuck is happening like why is he doing this like it's not like oh that was an, a really artful way of making the speed force look real or whatever the fuck you're trying to go for but it's like it just didn't do it but so again, it's like all you see is this awkward run and you're just going what the fuck am i looking at well because they didn't if you make him run now first of all don't just have him run. I mean, I think that's the answer we all know to the real problem. But if you do make him run that way, you have to at least have a scene where he's like, yeah, yeah. you know, the speed force is so hard to control. I have to, I have to do Tai Chi stuff to project the energy properly or it's too much. It would take something like that to at least tell the audience, like, this is why I run like a moron. Yeah, yeah like one line of dialogue. They had four yeah. hours. <laughs> three or four minutes of those four hours were spent with these Norwegian girls sniffing Aquaman's shirt. You could have cut that out, had Barry say one line, basically exactly what you just said, being like, "Yeah, I do Tai Chi to keep speed force. And they try to- imply, From ripping me apart or something. Yeah. At the very end, he does like a weird Tai Chi pose. But again, I would have never connected the two. They, no, they I, did, I, I didn't until you literally just said that. 
<laughs> but the the other thing that makes it dumb is when you see him running, he does the stupid Tai Chi speed skating. So I guess you're supposed to assume, yeah, he has to direct the energy, whatever. But then in your in your favorite scene where he's rescuing Iris, he's just standing there, flipping a hot dog and doing whatever the fuck walking around. That's kind of my problem. So well, it's not consistent. On an, another problem from that being he tears through his shoes, right? And then he runs out to the door and he skids to a stop in the concrete and it ripples underneath his feet, shattering away. And his feet are fine because he's running barefoot and he just skidded to a halt in concrete. Nothing happens. He helps Iris down, blah, blah, blah. Five seconds later, he's talking to Bruce about a suit made of the shit that they made the space shuttle out of so it doesn't burn up in the atmosphere. Why does he need this suit? Like, clearly he's not hurt when he's running at super speed. He just ran barefoot and skidded to a halt in concrete. And then like later on, and then, then if you need that suit, it does kind of make sense with the Tai Chi thing, but like he doesn't need the suit obviously because he doesn't need it. They showed that. And then like, then like later on when he's doing the Tai Chi thing, you're just like, it just looks like he's standing still and running on a treadmill. It doesn't look right to me. Like it looks really weird. Anyway, yeah, a lot again, of problems. Answer, a lot of problems there. Yeah, but again, the answer is just have him run. It's the one yeah. thing Flash does is run. I mean, you're right. That's his superpower is that he runs fast. And if you're gonna make a really weird change like that, again, I appreciate y'all trying to be novel about it, but without explaining it, everyone's going to be like, "Why isn't he running like a normal human being runs?" Or at least start normal. And then when you start approaching the speed where everything starts running backwards, then you're going like, whoa, it's in my no, water. You're like, then I'd be like, oh, okay, it got weird. Because now stop. time's changing. Joe, you're saying, already there's, losing. There's a way to do it, even without explaining it. That would be intuitive to the audience. And they didn't do that. No. Joe, if you're having that conversation, you've already lost. Because the answer is have <laughs> I mean, I agree normal. with you. The answer is just have him run normally. This is what's going to happen. It's just like the Aquaman speech bubble air pocket underwater. And when they make the Flash movie, they're going to be like, yeah, none of that. <laughs> it's like, what? Why did you do it in the first fucking place? Like, it's like that same argument of like, it's so dumb. Why did you make these weird choices? Because the second they make a Flash movie, you know they're not going to fucking make them run like that. It's so dumb. All right. So part six is titled Something Darker. And this is when everything goes down, I guess, with the final battle. Um, well, and so another quick question. I mean, why is Superman evil when he comes back to life? Um, I think he's- I don't know. And he starts so scanning very... the box that makes him evil or- not, I don't think he's evil. I just don't think he has any memories and he's kind of going on instinct and he starts scanning the Justice League. And because he starts scanning Cyborg's body, Cyborg's body reacts with like the self-defense mechanism. So technically Cyborg starts the fight and then I that's think true. reacts after that. That's what I mean with the scanning stuff. Is it's, that mother is... box like programming or something? Cause why would okay. Superman isn't a Terminator who scans things, right? Well, he was I... just X-raying them. Yeah, I just chalked His it up. His brain to... was just like, let me evaluate what is in front of me. And then when he hit Cyborg, Cyborg systems were like, he's, Ass he's threat assessing me and he's a giant threat i should react which is mother box shit i guess i don't know i i just wasn't sure if they were implying that that was the mother box influence or something that like reprogrammed him in some way and that's why well also it wasn't like it was like it's not like it's the fucking lazarus pit from uh batman comics or something where you're crazy when you wake back up like why doesn't he know who he is like why doesn't well, but apparently it is a Lazarus because he does wake up crazy and angry. I mean, I'm assuming it's just kind of like a weird amnesia. He was stabbed by kryptonite and he's been in hibernation. And if you think about it, like he wakes up, his most recent memory was being killed by this monster. And now there's these four strangers in front of him. So yeah. I, I don't mind that scene as much. I, I, I don't, it doesn't bother me that he starts fighting them, especially because they fight him first technically you know kind of thing but like what bothers me is that he doesn't immediately go like why am i fighting you guys like fuck off and just kind of like leave or something like he should have just immediately left like it's he's still superman like he still kind of should have been like but he's not superman. well i don't know who you guys are but that's the whole thing with the snyderverse and i think because 
we're comic nerds and have such strong attachments to these characters why we hate this universe. <laughs> I know, it's really it's, yeah, Because again, yeah, these are not heroes. And as we see, Superman's instinct is just to, to kill. kill. It's to and kill. He like, doesn't what, care about they, the sanctity of life or anything. Yeah, he's like a predator. Like he just straight up, there. even in Man of Steel, he was very, no emotion really. If It kind of takes away the heart and soul of Superman because even if Superman was you know, suffering from ab amnesia, you would still think he's such a good person that he wouldn't resort to just, even if he didn't know who he was or who these people were, he wouldn't just- Yeah, not, not knowing who you are doesn't like change who you are. You just don't remember like Lois or something. You know, like it doesn't make you like a different human. No, yeah, but I mean, like he, the box did make him a little bit- I weird. mean, in this fucked up universe, I I take that I I'd believe that I'd buy that like it's a yeah. it's a fair explanation but it's <laughs> but again not explained also so if that is the case they did a horrible job portraying that yeah. and I mean that's one of the but, weird things too is that the mother boxes are like legit evil when in the comics they're just kind of yeah like, that's a very that was another weird fucking yeah, thing and the comics too. are just sort of computer things that can boob tube you right? it's like you're it's a it's a future cell phone that's yeah. all yeah but the, in this it's a cell phone that can like teleport witches. me places. They're witches' souls or something? And so yeah, I don't, don't fucking know. We're definitely witches in the Age of Heroes fight um, that were definitely... Yeah, and then in the weird, and we'll get there, but I mean the weird cyborg part where he goes into the mother boxes and he, they're like physical witch-looking beings and he's like talking or arguing with them or fighting them or whatever the fuck happens, but it's just like one of those that you're just like, what the fuck? They're not called mother boxes because there's literally a woman's soul inside of a box. Like it's, <laughs> it's very, it's very strange. I don't know. Also in this version, Cyborg isn't a father box, right? He's just, it was the mother box itself that turned him into that. Yeah, that, I don't know the lore, but it was my understanding that mother boxes were kind of what the new gods used and father boxes were what. Yeah, father boxes were, I think, apocalypse corrupted mother boxes into father box like it's like a hacked mother box that's evil is a father box but yeah cyborg's body in this one is just the the mother box built a body for him basically yeah it was it wasn't that like he merged with a fa like father boxes don't exist in this movie right not that i know of no yeah i mean the fact that cyborg is created from a mother box is a pretty recent uh retcon kind of thing anyway yeah it's like um, a new 52 era type uh, like, okay yeah i just remember let's, let's explain this somehow they did it in, like yeah. back in the day he was just a kid that got horribly injured and they built him a cyborg body that's it like there was no like you know he's not like techno organic virus or like mother box built or he's just like his dad's a scientist and he made him legs you know like that's all it was like it wasn't like he made him legs <laughs> Yeah, I, I was basing it on um, like now he's a real boy. Young Justice season had him it had a father box. Yeah, so yeah, and that's again, that's kind of like again, New Fifty Two kind of like retcon of like let's make this make sense somehow because the technology is insane. So like it it helps. I think it builds on his character. It makes it more interesting, but at the same time, like it's relatively new. I. All right, so back to the movie. The Superman that isn't the Superman we know and love from cartoons and comics. Yeah, beats the crap him. out of them. Throws what? Flash into a staircase. Why was he shirtless? Didn't they bury him in a tuxedo? No, dude, you gotta show that bod. You gotta show that ripped bod. Like a weird I think, I think when Flash hit the mother box and it like electrified the, uh -huh. one, like it, it like shredded his clothing. But of course kept his pants on because we don't want to be lewd. He's gotta, he's gotta have pants on, guys. He's, the, he's like the Hulk. Like he can't just have... A giant Hulk dick swinging around while he's fighting. You gotta, you gotta keep those pants on. <laughs> and then, of course, he stops because Lois Lane, the only person he cares about, asks him. I say, I don't like uh, that is a thing in these movies, but I do buy that because, like, it's just, yeah, of course he loves Lois. So, like, when Lois is there, he's like, oh, fuck, Lois, okay. And even after he takes her away and they leave, he's still kind of like, okay, yeah. uh, this is where I grew up but she's in the house and I don't really know how to handle it. Like he's still kind of, he's calm, but he's still kind of like trying to remember what's going on. So it doesn't, Another, that scene's not horrible or anything. Like, you know, like the, those, if you buy that scene, like Patty was just saying about him being confused when he woke up, like it's not, 
that crazy that Lois triggers memory. This is a really random note, and I don't yeah. know if y'all even thought about it, but when I was watching it today, the scene when Lois is showing Superman his, you know, where he grew up, trying to jog his memory. Mm-hmm. I, like, I like Amy Adams as Lois Lane, and I mm-hmm. like Henry Cavill as Superman, but them together, whatever that chemistry is, it it just doesn't, it seems very, it seems more like big sister, little brother than, I don't know. It's something really they awful. don't they don't seem to have any on screen chemistry. I agree. I think th- I think their most chemistry heavy scene for me was in Batman versus versus Superman colon Dawn of Justice, <laughs> where where uh, he had just saved Lois or something and he comes home and she's in the bath and they like actually like kiss and he gets in the bathtub with her. And it actually genuinely seems like maybe they love each other. <laughs> But like other than that i don't think i've ever seen like them i mean they talk about loving each other a lot and they discuss like and he acts a certain way but like they don't have they don't have a lot of on-screen chemistry i think think the core issue is and i don't know how this is possible but if you look at like earlier henry cavill movies as time passes he becomes a worse actor and I just think like, if you can't act, it's hard to act intimate with somebody in a film because you can't act. Yeah. And, I mean, like if you look at a, a Henry Cavill movie from 10 years ago, he's somehow a better You're right, actor. right, because I, I definitely don't blame Amy Adams for their lack of chemistry because she's a really good actor and she's done many things where I'm like, fucking good job. You know, like kind of thing, like, wow, that was a powerful scene, you know, but like, Man, I guess acting across a Henry Cavill in these movies. I mean, he is trying to be Superman. So it's like, how do you, but he, how do you do that? I don't know. He can't, I don't but, know I mean, but he's, he was bad in like Mission Impossible. He's just not a good, good actor. And it's similar to, I don't know if you've noticed this, but in any, watch any rock movie. He also can't get any kind of like intimacy or chemistry with a love interest. Are in you him. saying something bad about the rock? Yeah, he's not a good actor. We can't be friends anymore. No, listen, The Rock is a, is very charismatic. Like he can crack jokes and have presence on screen, but he he can't act. Like when it comes to emotional range, and and things like that, you just can't do it. I kind of think Henry Cavill is the same thing. They're just not good actors. I think with The Rock though, he's such a large human being that he almost doesn't seem human. So like it's kind of hard to pair him up with. It, it is that would be if you put him next to a woman of any normal size whatsoever and he's it just looks like a toy it doesn't look real <laughs> it's, very, it's very interesting i do buy the rock like in the fast and furious movies when he doesn't he have a daughter in those movies like i buy him that yeah. like, overprotective goofy dad but yeah when it comes to romantic stuff with him uh it doesn't doesn't work at all but anyways, back to Justice League. <laughs> yeah, I just brought that up because I think that addresses what you meant. So between the lack what of we're community. trying to say is high hopes for the Black Adam movie. <laughs> oh, yeah. As long as there's no love. That is, that's 12 years in the making or whatever since they announced it. Because WB knows what they're fucking doing. And, and is somehow there's somehow a Shazam 2 separate from this going the on. fuck? Why? Are and why? Nobody, doing? what sense does that make? All right, back to oh, this. Back to God this. Damn it. Sorry. Again, I can't stress this enough. There's a Shazam 2 movie coming out and a Black Adam movie coming out, and they're not the same movie. No. Wanted to bring that up. Do they okay? <laughs> I know nothing. I've been I yeah. I haven't been following the Shazam stuff for Captain. It's all, it's almost as if you were to make a Venom movie without Spider-Man in it. I know that's, yeah, that's how dumb that movie is. But imagine how dumb it would be to do that. But it's kind of like, again, no one would ever do that. No one would ever make a Venom movie without Spider-Man in it. L- listen, let, it's this simple. I, I think I mean, we're, we're beating around the bush here, but like one of the most successful, insanely successful movies of the la- of comic book movies of the recent history was Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. And that movie was fucking insane and they involved so many characters it didn't even make sense there was a fucking spider-man pig character in that goddamn movie and everyone was like bravo you nailed it congratulate and like 
this is all this is what we're talking about this whole time going back to the green arrow fucking like in a prison movie like just make a fucking good movie and throw as many characters in as you want and as long as it's a good movie we'll all like it yeah it's just like how it's not hard a quick thing joe i'm pretty sure into the spider-verse is the lowest performing spider-man movie they've ever made it's a fantastic movie i know i agree it's great but i mean box office wise i think it's the lowest earning yeah well i mean you can't but if they made into the spider-verse with real people it would have been a phenomenal i don't think it would have worked (laughs) <laughs> All right, anyway, we're back at Justice League. What were we talking about Justice League? Final battle. Uh, Another fighting Steppenwolf. Th- this goes back to how Kevin Costner died in Man of Steel. Mm-hmm. So Cyborg's dad goes into a room, takes out a remote, and uses the remote to start a laser that kills him in the room he's in with the cube. And this goes back to why can't Zack Snyder just have a father die in a way that makes sense? Like Clark Kent didn't need to die, and neither did this guy. Like neither of Clark, these fathers Clark, dies in a sense. You mean man. you mean you mean Pa Kent? Pa Kent. Jonathan. John. John Jonathan. Kent. Oh yeah, Clark. Yeah, whatever. Jonathan Kent. Kevin <laughs> Costner. Kevin Costner. Martha Kent. Wayne. Clark Kent. Whatever. It's all the same. Thomas. Why did Thomas Wayne <laughs> die in a hurricane? I don't know. But I want But again, like both these father deaths make no sense whatsoever they, they make an active choice to die for no reason i just the, uh, i can't i was about to go no. on a rant about jonathan kent dying in man of steel i can't do it let's get back to this movie but joe cyborg's dad i i can't stress yeah this that out. part is takes out a wireless super, remote super, super dumb super stupid takes out a wireless make any remote sense. And i'm dies. not saying he wouldn't have been murdered by steppenwolf two seconds later that's not that's not an argument here but why step into the room and then go with a remote control and then be in the area that would rip you to shreds hoping that you destroyed the mother box or whatever but like just do it from outside the room just when i saw that scene i thought okay well he's down he's maybe downloading himself into the mother box or like i, I thought oh, there yeah, must be not. some plan right that, see that would have been fucking cool <laughs> <laughs> but, he did, but that didn't happen. That wasn't. No, the, it did not. No, it, it did not. not. Wouldn't it have been amazing if when Cyborg entered the mother box at the end of the movie, his fucking father was there? That's downloaded what I into the. Not that would have been really interesting. Because I didn't. <laughs> and almost like he died for a fucking reason. Yeah. I didn't think there was any reason to kill. Like, A, it's like. Killing, really killing Silas made no, no sense other than yeah. to give Cyborg the loss of a father to give him more of an arc. But well, it's, he, again, he, if he died for a reason, it would have made sense, and, but he didn't. Okay, so here's a funny thing, though. So they're all prepping for the final battle. Superman, Superman yeah. remembers who he is, and he's like, they brought mm-hmm. me back. I had to find out why. But first, let me run some errands. <laughs> he goes to his ship. He's like going through his, it's like Cher from Clueless when she's picking her first. Yeah, he's got to pick his outfit. Yeah, he's looking at all his different outfits. He's listening to some... <laughs> Some audio from his dad uh, hyping him up. And then you think he's going to go to the battle because he's Superman and he can hear and, you know, but then he goes to visit no, Alfred. You got visit, oh, to visit Alfred first. It's super normal. Like you, look, God, you guys are so mean on Alfred in this. You I mean, <laughs> him, and, him and Superman have a strong bond. And it's one of the first people he wants to visit when he comes back to life. The guy he's never met, you know? Um... But and I don't think he even knew where Alfred or Bruce Wayne lived, right? I mean, he must have listened no, he knew. to Alfred to go find where he was. Like, why not just listen for Chernobyl? I don't think it's I don't I don't think it's hard to figure out where Bruce Wayne lives. But Bruce probably has like fifty different houses. Like, how did he know where Alfred was? Because he must have listened. Like, he sh- could have just listened for Chernobyl, but he must. I'm have pretty sure. I mean, I'm, I'm not not to, not to be too nice to this movie but it's bruce has been in seclusion in that little lake house he's had for like a long time it's not that weird that he knows where bruce is another another they never percent like another so snyder moment he chooses a black suit he doesn't choose the blue and red superman suit so again i don't have a problem with that mainly because 
we all wanted to see that when he came back to life. But it was the fact that he wasn't wearing it when he came back to life and he was wearing no clothes and some pants <laughs> that I was like, well, that's a weird choice. They and again, I'm like, okay, well, he put it on because it's the black suit and that's what Superman wears when he comes back to life. And every comic book nerd on the planet wanted to see that. And I, and I, and I liked seeing it too. But the only problem I have with that is that at the end of the movie, when he opens his shirt, it's still black and silver and yeah. not red and blue and gold. And I'm like, ah, you were like this close to making that make sense. And all you had to do was have it be the real suit when he opened his shirt at the end of the movie. Like we did it, I came back to life. Like this is me now, I know what it is to be a hero or something like even just the symbolism of having that costume on versus the other one would mean something and it was not there. But Zack like, Snyder oh. can't, I mean, if you remember Man of Steel, it the color palette in that movie is all gray, like his suit there looks gray and it doesn't look blue and red. Like Zack Snyder cannot have him be blue and red. He doesn't well, like- Well, I mean, gunmetal is gun metal gray. so cool. I mean, it's so cool. It's way cool. I mean, it's so much grittier and like realer, you know, to not have color in the world. I mean, it's just, wow, that's some real shit. <laughs> um, God damn it. Grim. Everything's got to be grim dark. Um, we haven't even talked about the Jesus Christ, the nightmare. Yeah, the we're almost done with this part. We haven't My even talked about on, um, on the final fight, you kind of like they start beat like they gang up on Steppenwolf and they start beating the shit out of him. And not yeah. that it's but they're all kind of smirking while they do it. Like they're torturing him. Superman literally incinerates his horn off. Aquaman ends up stabbing him through the back. But it was just kind of strange that they, it seemed like they were toying with him basically. Yeah, it's like cats. The actions like on their faces. Cats. Yeah, it wasn't like they were fighting there was no honor about it. It was like all three of them, Wonder Woman, Superman, and Aquaman were just like giggling. And yeah, <laughs> Superman just shows up and starts wailing on him. And he's like, we got this. Now let's have fun. <laughs> yeah, it's, <laughs> like like cats fucking, it's like how cats fuck with their prey. Like they're, they were just like it was, it was eating just, him and batting him around. Peculiar. And I felt like weirdly enough, like Steppenwolf had more character development than most, like you kind of almost empathize with the giant monster because he's just trying to get his dad's approval and he's working real hard for that. <laughs> I don't know. The scene, just weird. The scene where he, his like- We all know the psychological were... damage that growing up on Apocalypse <laughs> can do to you. Yeah, well, yeah, we, yeah, we've talked about Mr. Miracle and growing up there, but. No, that scene where he has his helmet off and he's talking to, I think, like, Dasad about coming back home or something. Yeah. And I know it's CGI, but, like, his eyes are, like, all watery and, like, he just, he's very, almost like a pathetic figure. Like, it's really sad. He, I mean. He does, he, Steppenwolf does a lot of emoting, which is insane because he's a giant CGI monster. <laughs> so, I was like, there's, like, a decent, the weird thing is that they had two of those exact same scenes to me. I don't mean yeah. to backtrack. No, they did. There yeah, was two I, scenes where he's talking to the side where you could literally have just had one. And I'm like, they, they, they say the exact same thing in both scenes. It's very, it's hit. like, hey, I have this, I have one mother box. I'm, I'm looking for them. And then the next time he's like, hey, I have two mother boxes and I'm looking for them. It's like, we just don't do that second one. Like, yeah, you don't need that. You gotta hit that four hour it. run time. Um, I like the <laughs> Snyder version of Steppenwolf more than the Whedon version. But the design, I agree. I don't know why they gave him such like human looking puppy dog eyes. Like, I felt like they should have given him some sort, like, just make it a little bit more. I think that's why it was kind of jarring because he's this big giant monster, but he had so much like sadness in his eyes that you kind of felt bad for him. It, just the thing, too, is like his face is tiny, he has this little like underbite and a tiny face and be beady little pathetic eyes. Like it's sad. He he's got a sad face. Sad, yeah. He's a sad monster. Dark sides uh cast him aside, guys. Yeah. I will say I didn't I mean in terms of like I know it's a weird, I guess, design choice, but if you're technically describing 
feeling exactly what they wanted you to feel for that character. So, I mean, like, you're basically saying they did a good job. <laughs> like, I don't understand. I don't understand what we're whining about here. I'm more saying I think it's a weird direction to take to yeah. make. Uh, it's a weird direction to take, but you want, you want to sympathize with him at least a little bit in terms of, like, what his motivations are. Bit, but I, like, legit... If I, like, let's say I was a random superhero, like the Martian Manhunter, and I showed up at that fight, and I didn't know who was who, and I saw Aquaman, Superman, and Wonder Woman wailing on this guy, they looked like the villains in that final scene. Like, if you didn't have any background what was going on, and they did do a good job of making you empathize with Steppenwolf, so you, I kind of felt, it was just a weird scene. It was, it was uncomfortable to watch. But that, that goes back to this. Going with him, pretty much. Yeah, but that goes back to the the Snyderverse where these are not heroes. They're not heroes. It, this is what they are. They're they're fighters who fight giant monsters, but they're not. Yeah, it's uh, it's Mortal Kombat, but with super superhero costumes yeah. on. Pretty much. Um, I thought Flash turning back time was kind of cool. The visual of it, how it was kind of reconstruction. I, I mean, again, like I, I mentioned that when they were brought him back to life, I kind of, I agree. It's kind of one of the cool, again, the insertion, the reinsertion of Cyborg's arc and more Flash and like what he was doing does make this a better movie on that scale. Like before in the Wade version, it was just, Flash and Cyborg were these like weird kids that had nothing to do with anything. They were barely there. You had no idea why they were involved. Like it was just Batman was like coaching them and like it was just horrible. And then like in this, at least there is like something of substance. Like Flash did something really fucking crazy and awesome. It's kind of cool watching them fail and then him having to like, oh yeah. fuck, I gotta do this right now. I yeah, have to say, yeah. I mean like. I, we've seen a lot of different Batman over the years. <laughs> and watching Ben Affleck as Batman in Batman v Superman trailers before the movie ever came out, I was like, my God, that is the closest thing to actually seeing Batman I've ever seen in my entire life. And it, like, and yes, this is just a trailer. Like there was a scene where like, he like moves around something and his, his neck actually moved in the suit. And I was like, what the fuck? He can move his neck? Like just that alone. Like, I was just, and for fuck's sake, they finally made his costume look like he's supposed to look. I mean, like there's little things like that he did for this role that wasn't him at all. It was just costume design or whatever you want to call it. But like, not the worst Batman I've ever seen. No matter how bad his acting is, <laughs> like, still really good batman you know what i mean yeah I, I would say the scene in batman vs superman when he beats the shit out of all those guys in that warehouse is like that fucking amazing well, this live action <laughs> batman scene and just the costume alone i'm mean, like just, finally he's not wearing like hockey pads so to speak from the, the nolan movies but like he, like how many batmans have we seen where he's just like covered in armor and you're just like i get it he's a human but like and you need to make it realistic, but like, I just want fucking Batman. Like, I just wanted to be wearing sweatpants with underwear on the outside and punch through a brick wall because he's fucking Batman. Like that, I don't need him to be wearing armor. And granted in this, they bulk him up in armor a little bit, but like, ugh, just at the very least, Ben Affleck brought to the table, hey, this is what Batman looks like in the comic books. And this yeah. is what he looks like on the screen. And I'm like, good fucking congratulations. You finally did it. One of my favorite parts of Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice is that he spends a montage working out like to get physically yeah. stronger and then puts on a robot suit. Yeah. And it was like, if you have the robot suit, why bother doing CrossFit for a day? Why do you just use For the robot a day? Suit? You think he got that strong in a day, Al? Well, the, monta the montage looked like it was that day, but I just mean, why worry about getting a little physically stronger if you're just going to put on a robot suit? Every little bit matters. We don't know what that robot suit takes out of him. I, I just, I enjoy, oh, and okay. I know, I know we're not talking about Justice League anymore, but can we talk about how Metropolis and Gotham are across a river from each other? Yeah. <laughs> what was, why make that decision? No, I don't I, know. That makes no sense to me at all. No idea. 
I'm, it's almost like Keystone and Central City across from a river. <laughs> but why? It's a deep cut flash joke, guys. Yeah. Well, yeah, I don't. But um, imagine if sh if like across the Hudson from New York was Chicago. Yeah, that's weird. Like, are there any cities like that? It that doesn't make any sense. Right? Like, they would just be part of the same city, right? I don't know. Listen, I know Gotham and Metropolis don't exist, but try to make them exist in something that makes re relative sense in the real world. It's not hard. <laughs> you, can't, yeah. you can't have them across the bay from each other. It doesn't make any fuck. It's the same fucking city. No one would be like, hey, we're on this other side of this body of water. What should we call this place? still metropolis you fucking idiot we're right across the water it's right over there <laughs> like it's just the other side of metropolis yeah because like it's no not... in, in no world would that happen like it just doesn't make any sense yeah and because it's not set up like brooklyn from manhattan or whatever like gotham yeah. is its own full city and metropolis is its own like full metropolis yeah. it's it's illogical and they're a, a river River but seven. so much in these movies makes sense though so it's really weird that but, but, I, but again, that, I just, it's really weird that that alone doesn't make sense that's but why sense. make that decision like i just don't understand it why make it's really bizarre when you think about the fact that when commissioner gordon turns the bat signal on people in metropolis can probably also that's say, kind like... of the problem with that <laughs> Even in the comic books, when they created the fictional city of Bloodhaven and Nightwing was like, I'm moving to Bloodhaven. That's going to be my city. They made it like down the river. Like they made it feel like it was for like a pretty far distance away from Gotham, but still sort of like remotely connected to it. Yeah. <laughs> Just okay. like, but it wasn't, it wasn't on the other side of a river. <laughs> like wasn't it wasn't it was a nuclear further explosion. away. I don't know. Bloodhaven's like, been destroyed ten times. The point is, like Bloodhaven, you can set off a nuke. It doesn't affect Gotham City immediately. Right. Yes. Yeah. Like I don't know. It is just a really weird. Even the aesthetic of it, it doesn't look cool. It looks also really the cool. whole idea of those two cities in the comic books. I mean, if, at, a, at a very base level, is that Gotham is like this crime-ridden, corrupt shithole. And Metropolis is the city of tomorrow. They literally call it that. It's like this shining, gleaming, like this is what the city of America should be. Like this is the, the pinnacle of civilization kind of thing. And that's why Superman's there and it's all shiny and bright and it's Superman city. And okay. the Metropolis is Batman city, very Batman, like dark and crime. crime whatever. And you're like, the fact that those two cities could exist within like a mile of each other is insane. It doesn't make any sense at all. It's fucking madness. Um, also, but, why? But this version of Superman is not that version. So I guess it doesn't make sense. And why, when Superman and Zod are fighting or whatever, why wouldn't Batman be there helping people? He yeah, did immediately. Gonna, no, yeah. Bruce Wayne ran to check on his office building. <laughs> in a Jeep Renegade product placement, but Batman wasn't there saving lives. Like, why wasn't Batman saving lives? Because lives? Alfred is constantly telling how stupid it is that he's Batman. <laughs> doesn't, yeah. doesn't want him to do it anymore. But no, also, what it's we broad see, daylight. Are you insane? Batman doesn't come out in the day. What we see is a city in peril, and he just runs to check on how's my satellite. Also, Wayne Enterprise headquarters is in Gotham. But they have another no, it's just in an obsidiary across the river. What? You know what? Another uh, uh, so another uh, good note again to Batman's to Snyder's Batman's sake is that scene where the cops come in and he's like up in the corner and shit. Fucking amazing. Hard <laughs> anyway. to disagree. Okay, disagree on that. But go ahead. That's it. That's all. Uh, the only thing. Did you enjoy how he had a metal brand? that he would use on criminals? Did you enjoy that part? Again, this is going back to you hating the Dark Knight Returns yeah. and that Batman is based on Dark Knight Returns. So yeah. yes, I did enjoy it in that thought process, but as a normal Batman in this contemporary setting, it doesn't work, yes. Okay, so anyway, back to where were we at with Justice League, Patrick? Uh, Basically we're, we're, wrapping it up, he chops the, he chops the uh, Steppenwolf's head off and throws yeah. it through a gateway. To Elizabeth Warren, and she's like, "Er." <laughs> yeah, if you haven't seen the movie, Granny Goodness looks just like Elizabeth Warren. 
Yeah, Granny Goodness, who's, you know, if you listen to our first two episodes, she's one of the most, like, disturbing, terrifying characters in DC Comics. <laughs> and they basically cast a woman that looks just like Elizabeth Warren. And also, um, she's surrounded by, everyone else is a monster. Everyone else Did is a monster. Did they cast a woman, or is that just a... <laughs> I don't or is know. that just a CGI CGI human head on that body? I don't is know. Is that a human? Everybody else is. It just, every single other person in that room is a is a CGI body. So like, yeah, is that a person? She really, she really stands out. It's odd. It is very odd. Um, so we move on from that to a terrible epilogue. The only thing I'll be saying about the epilogue is when Deathstroke and Lex Luthor have their weird conversation about Batman. I can't. I can't stand Lex Luthor or Jesse Eisenberg's. Oh, but when talk he, about miscasting a character. First of all, when he, he has some line like Deathstroke says something and Lex Luthor says something like good boy. Yes, or that's like, exactly what I was going to say. Like Deathstroke, Deathstroke would murder boy. that guy. And then, Death, and then Lex Luthor goes, good boy. <laughs> yeah. But like in what universe does Deathstroke not just murder that guy? Yeah, it's terrible. Um, but moving on from the epilogue, the nightmare thing is the last thing. Oh, and everyone Wait, the universe where Lex Luthor doesn't get murdered is a universe where Lex Luthor is himself intimidating and scary, and that is not no. this universe. No. That's, that's the answer to your question. Just like Flash running normally is the answer to all our Flash problems, Lex Luthor being actually intimidating is the answer to that question. Yeah. Terrible, terrible take on Lex Luthor. Terrible. Um, all right, the one nightmare. of the worst okay. things I've ever seen, I think. Jared Leto got a lot of props for his spiel as the Joker in this. Why? All I heard was Jim Carrey. Did y'all not hear <laughs> Jim Carrey in his performance? Well, well, kind of like, well, now I need to rewatch it. Yeah. It, and then I kind of checked out at this point in the movie, but I'm pretty sure, I don't know what the context is, but Joker says to Batman, who is going to give you a reach around? Yeah, he definitely says something along those lines. Um, he basically implies that he's been jerking Batman joke. off. Yeah, it's, it's just a sexual bad. joke, Patrick. It, I mean, but it's the whole. I don't. I don't understand why people were so obsessed with that scene. I guess is what I'm saying. Because it's edgy. I guess it's edgy, man. It's so gritty and real. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are you guys done? Yeah, I mean, I've. Are we all done ranting? I did. I did not in like this. I did not enjoy. Or in like, or enjoy. I did not enjoy the Snyder Cut. I thought it was a bad movie. And uh, it's just, there's no joy in it. It's just a slog and grim, dark and joyless and horrible. And I did not like the Snyder Cut. I, um, I thought it had a few moments that were good, but overall, yeah, it was a, uh, it was a really bad movie. Uh, again, I would say, I think I, I liked a few more moments than, the, uh, than you guys however and, and i will say this also like i said earlier i think i think it was a good ending to his quote-unquote trilogy as opposed to the waiting cut which was not that at all so in terms of finishing his quote-unquote vision sure good job but overall like not the justice league i wanted to see not the batman i like to see not the superman i want to see or wonder woman and so on and so on and so on yeah. that being said <sighs> do something better the Warner Brothers <laughs> what the fuck man get your shit together get your shit together you just, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah that's my movie of scotch for this week uh, I'm Joe and you've been listening to Patty bye guys and Alessandro goodbye <laughs> Good goodbye. goodbye I am robot